case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. In an impressive turn of events, the Delaware Court of Chancery ruled against Edward M. Miller in a landmark case known as Agronoff v. Miller, dating back to 2001. The court's decision aimed to settle a contentious dispute surrounding Miller's deceptive tactics to wield control of EMS Corp. It all started when Miller, guided by a cunning intent, purchased warrants from Bankers Trust. This purchase, in essence, embedded him within a larger conspiracy to seize control of EMS. The issue raised eyebrows considering that Miller had reportedly violated the rights of EMS, CVC, and numerous other parties to the first refusal contract. What followed was a chain of law-breaching actions, which included tampering with the first refusal contract, indirectly encouraging breaches of fiduciary duty, and abuse of confidential EMS data to aid his acquisitions. Interestingly, the Supreme Court saw through Miller's machinations. In a bold verdict, the court nullified Miller's extrication of Callaway and Agronoff from their roles. Additionally, Miller's shares that weren't linked to the BT warrants were prescribed from voting until presented first to EMS and subsequent to that CVC. As a follow-up, all EMS shares Miller owned, including those gained through the exercise of BT warrants, were ordered to be offered to EMS or CVC should they opt for purchase. The Supreme Court ruled that a fiduciary buying property for personal gains, which was intended for the beneficiary, must treat the property as a trust for the beneficiary. The court ordered Miller to be paid the lesser amount between his purchase price and the fair value price, quantifiable as the price at which EMS, CVC, or Air Canada could have bought the shares. The final verdict descended upon a fair value price concluded through appraisal by the Court of Chancery. Dismissing Lee's equity-based valuations and Puglisi's analysis on revenues, the court determined the value of EMS at $41.02 per warrant share. The court ruled out the value born out of synergistic change in control expectations when adjusting for minority discounts. A surprising twist came about as the court criticized Miller's fair value approach, dismissing it as anomaly for it wrongly awarded him control premium and treated him as an innocent minority stockholder. At the end of this captivating legal journey, all parties were instructed to deliver a conforming final order within seven days following the court's opinion. Case briefs and so much more. LS Data's got what you're looking for. Visit lse.law, elevate your mind. Leave the stress of class.